This work is about statistical depth and new oblivious transfer protocols. I'm Zheng Zhongjing from Johns Hopkins University. This work is joined with Wei Pogoyo, Abhishek Jen, and Julio Malvota. In this work, we study statistical security in two-party protocols. The statistical security can provide everlasting security, such that even for a computational unbounded adversary, it cannot break the skin. However, such a security notion is hard to achieve. For example, it is impossible for both parties to achieve statistical security for general functionalities. So the focus of this work is on the one side statistical security. We study two specific cryptographic protocols. The first protocol we study is the interactive proof systems. And here we care about the statistical privacy for the prover. The second protocol we study is the oblivious transfer. And in this setting, we care about to achieve statistical privacy for the receiver. Recall that in an interactive proof system, there is a prover and a verifier. The prover tries to convince the verifier that some statement X is in an NP language L. To achieve this, the prover needs to interact with the verifier using the witness omega of the statement X. And at the end of the interaction, the verifier decides to accept or reject the prover. We require an additional property of the interactive proof system which is the witness indistinguishability. It is defined as follows. For any malicious verifier, it cannot uh, distinguish between the following two cases. In the first case, the prover uses a witness omega to compute the protocol. And in the other case, the prover uses another witness omega prime to compute the protocol. Unlike the zero knowledge property, Witness indistinguishability can be achieved in only two rounds. In this work, we study ZAPS, which is a two round public coin witness indistinguishable protocol. In such protocols, the wifi sends some uniform random coins in the first round. And then the prover responds with some proof. And these proofs can be publicly verifiable. The public coin property requires that the verifier only uses public random coins. Note that the, this primitive is very important in cryptography and has many applications. Since it only has two rounds, it is used in the round efficient secure multi-party computation. And since it's publicly verifiable, and the verifier's first round message is reusable for different proofs. It is also used in the resettable secure protocols. In the work of Dwork and Nor, they show that the ZAPS and the NISIC proofs in the common random stream model are equivalent. So combining this result with the NISIC construction from quadratic residuosity assumption, trampled permutation, and decisional linear assumption, we can get ZAPS construction from these assumptions. And also in the recent work of BP15, we construct ZAPS from indistinguishability obfuscation. However, all above works are computational ZAP proofs. So our first question is, does there exist a statistical ZAPS? And our first result is a statistical ZAPS from cost polynomial hardness based on the learning with arrows. And in the work of KKS18, they achieve a statistical private coin witness indistinguishable protocol. The second protocol we study is the oblivious transfer, which is a two-party protocol with a sender and a receiver. The sender has two messages, M0 and M1. The receiver has a single bit beta. So after some interaction, the receiver can get one of the two messages. The receiver can only get M subscript beta. And for the sender's privacy, we require that 
the other message m subscript one minus beta is hidden. For the receiver's privacy, we require that its input beta is hidden to the sender. The oblivious transfer is also a very important primitive in cryptography, and it also has many applications, such as secure multi-party computation, the two-round witness indistinguishable protocol, and the non manipulable commitment. There are many previous works on constructing oblivious transfer. In these previous works, they construct a two-round statistical sender private oblivious transfer in the plan model. So one natural question is, can we construct two-round statistical receiver private oblivious transfer? And it turns out that it's impossible. Consider the following scenario, where there is a sender and a non-uniform malicious receiver. Since the receiver side is statistical hidden, the malicious receiver can find a first round message OT1 such that it both equals to a first round message for beta equals to zero and a first round message for beta equals to one. Then the sender completes the protocol using some messages M0 and M1. So the malicious receiver can get both of the two messages. And this compromises the sender's privacy. Now we know that uh, two round is impossible. So can we construct a three round protocol? Then in the recent work of KKS18, they construct a three round protocol from super polynomial hardness assumptions. So our second question is, Based on the polynomial hardness assumptions, does there exist a three-round statistical receiver-private oblivious transfer in the plan model? And our second result answers this question positively. We show two constructions. Our first construction is from any two-round statistical sender-private oblivious transfer. And our second construction is based on the computational delphi hellman assumption. We also note that our first construction is also an OT reversal. It means that we transform from the statistical sender private OT to a statistical receiver private OT. Now we go to the technical details for the statistical depths. Recall that the statistical depths is a two round public coin with this indistinguishable protocol. To construct the ZAPs, our starting idea is to compress a sigma protocol where a correlation intractable hash, HK, where K is the key for this kind of hash function. We will give the definition of this correlation intractable hash later. So for the sigma protocol on the left hand side, with message alpha, beta, and gamma, the compressed protocol works as follows. The verifier sends a CH key K in the first round. Then the prover prevail is the first round message alpha for the sigma protocol. And then the prover applies the CH hash to the message alpha and gets the second round message beta directly. Next, the prover computes its third round message gamma and send it with the first round message alpha. And this completes the protocol. The correlation intractable hash defines as follows. A correlation intractable hash function, HK, must satisfy the following property. For any fixed circuit C, if we sample the key k uniformly at random, then it is hard for the adversary to find an input x such that h subscript k of x equals to c of x. Now we give a briefing idea for the security. In fact, we require the first round message alpha of the sigma protocol to be a commitment of some message m. 
if you are familiar with the sigma protocol for graph Hamilton density, then this message M is in fact some random cycle graphs. Then it is easy to see that the witness indistinguishability follows from the hiding property of such commitments. And the tricky part is how to prove for the soundness. So to prove for the soundness, let's consider a cheating prover who tries to convince the verifier that some false statement X is in the language L. To achieve this, the cheating prover need to provide the proofs uh, alpha star and gamma star. So the first step to proving the soundness is to extract a malicious message uh, m star from this first round message alpha star using a trapdoor. Now, from the special soundness of the sigma protocol, we know that given such m star, the only accepting beta star is efficiently computable. So if we combine these, these two steps, then we know that there exists a efficiently computable circuit C, such that beta star equals to C of alpha star. Now, if the verifier accepts the proof, then beta star equals to uh, CH hash of the alpha star which is also equals to C of alpha star. And then this contradicts to the definition of correlation intractability. Note that such commitment scheme with hiding and extractability can be built in the CRS model. For example, using a public key encryption. And this would imply zaps in the CRS model. However, we need to build such hiding and extractability in the plan model. So the idea is to use a two-round statistical sender private of reviews transfer. So the idea is to have the both parties to sample a single bit B and B prime respectively. And have the verifier to fit its random bit B to the receiver. Then the receiver generates its first round message for the OT protocol. And then the prover acts as the sender and prepares the message for the sender. So the prover puts the message M in the B' position and put the bottom in the other position. And the prover complete, completes the protocol uh, with these messages. Now on the receiver side, with probability half, B would be equals to B prime. And in this case, the verifier can extract the message M. So we have the extractability. And also with probability half, B would not be equals to B prime. And in this case, the message M is hidden. So the verifier can only get a bottom. Next. We show how to combine this scheme with a sigma protocol and a correlation intractable hash to get a weakly secure statistical zaps. We will amplify the security later. So the compressed protocol works as follows. We have the both parties to sample a single bit B and B prime respectively, and have the verifier act as the receiver with the input bit B. Now the receiver generates its first round message OT1. So the verifier sends it with a uniform random CH key K to the prover. Now on the prover side, instead of prepare the its first round message alpha directly, the prover prepares the message M and the act as the sender. Then apply the correlation intractable hash to the OT2 message. And finally, computes is a third round message gamma. And send it with the OT2 message to the verifier. Now for this protocol, 
we can achieve statistical witness indistinguishability with the error approximately half. And we can also prove the soundness uh, as before. However, this uh, statistical error is too large. We need to amplify the security. The idea to amplify the security works as follows. So instead of having the both party to sample a single bit, we have the both parties to sample a string of length L. After the first round, on the sender side, it has two to the L positions. So the sender put the message M on the B prime's position and put the bottom on all other positions. Then the sender completes the protocol. Now on the receiver side, the receiver can only read the beep's position and all other positions are hiding. So again, there are two cases with probability one minus two to negative uh, L, B will be not be equal to B prime. In this case, the message M is hidden. So we have the hiding property. And also with probability 2 to the minus L, B would be equals to B prime. In this case, the receiver can get the message M, so we have the extractability. Note that this uh, kind of scheme can be abstracted as a two-round statistical hiding extractable commitment in the work of KKS18. Now we show how to combine such a scheme with a sigma protocol and a correlation intractable hash to get a construction of steps. So as you can see in the figure, the only changes we made are in the red color. So we change the bit to our strings of length L. Now for the statistical witness indistinguishability, uh, we have error approximately 1 over 2 to the L. So this value can be made negligible. And uh, for the soundness, we can prove the computational soundness via complexity leveraging. Due to the time constraint, I cannot cover this in detail, but if you are interested in this, you can refer to our paper. For the public coin property of this protocol, it follows from the pseudo-randomness of OT1 message. Now this concludes our construction of statistical zaps. For the second part of the technical details, I will talk about Oblivious Transfer. Here is an overview of our construction. To construct a three-round statistical receiver private OT, we propose a new notion. We call it statistical hash commitment. And we have two constructions of such commitment scheme. Our first construction is from the two-round statistical sender private OT. And our second construction is from the computational delphi hellman assumption. Due to the time constraint of this talk, I will only cover the first result. Recall that a statistical receiver private OT is a two-party protocol where there is a sender with two messages, M0 and M1, and a receiver with a single bit beta. So after some interaction, the receiver can only get M subscript to beta and the other position is hiding. Now we care about the statistical receiver's privacy, which requires that the receiver's input beta is statistically hidden to the sender. To construct such a commitment scheme, our main tool is a statistical hash commitment. In such a commitment scheme, there is a receiver and a committer. The committer has a bit beta, and there is a two-round committing phase. So after the committing phase, the receiver uses the transcript in the committing phase to get two hash values for beta equals to 0 and beta equals to 1. And in the opening phase, the committer opens his input bit beta uh, and also sends some values in the green box. And on the receiver side, 
he simply checks if the hash values for the beta equals to the green box value. We further request the commitment scheme to be statistically hidden. It refers that for any malicious receiver, it cannot distinguish between the case when beta equals to 0 and beta equals to 1. And we also require such commitment scheme to be computational binding. It requires that for any malicious committer, after the committing phase, the receiver can get to uh, hash values for beta equals to 0 and beta equals to 1. And the computational binding property requires that the malicious committer cannot uh, find for both these two hash values. Next, we show how to construct such three-round statistical receiver private over the bills transfer from such a commitment scheme. So the idea is to have the receiver act as the committer and have the sender act as the receiver. So the receiver commits its input bit B to this commitment scheme. And after the committing phase, the sender gets two hash values for the opening. Next, the sender applies the Goldrich 11 hardcore predicate to both of its hash values and the algorithm with its message M0 and M1, and send these two values to the receiver in the third round. Now, since the commitment scheme is statistically hiding, the receiver's bit beta is statistically hidden. So we have the statistical receiver privacy. And also, since the commitment scheme is computational binding, the receiver cannot guess both of the hash values simultaneously. So we have the computational sender privacy. Next, we show how to construct such statistical hash commitment scheme from any two-round oblivious transfer. So the idea is to have the receiver and the committer to run a secure two-party computation. And uh, such two-party computation can be constructed from the two-round oblivious transfer. For the committer, its input to this two-party computation is the bit beta and a uniform random blue box. For the receiver, its input to this two-party computation is a uniform random black box. This two-party computation only has output to the receiver, and it depends on the bit beta. If beta equals to zero, then the two-party computation outputs the blue box on the top and the red box on the bottom. Where the red box is defined as the XOR with the blue box and the uh, black box. And in the other case, when beta equals to 1, then we switch the position of the blue box and the red box. Now since the uh, from the statistical sender privacy of the OT protocol, this bit beta can be statistically hidden. So we have the statistically hiding property. And also uh, from the computational hiding property of the random black box value, we can get the computational binding property. Now here is a summary of our results. If you are interested, please refer to our paper in the full version. Thank you.